So I thought since I am here at an Airbnb, making my way through my creative reboot, reset, well, much, well, much needed, much needed create a break, I thought I would go through the different Airbnbs, why I love Airbnbs, and specific reasons, specific things of each Airbnb that I loved. So come on along for the ride. Sorry. Surfing on, on a TV is different than on a computer, but the way that she decorated, do you see it? I mean, the cameras. That, another reason why I had to stay in this place. So, her place, Kat's wonderful place, in between parading in Liverpool and I remember distinct, distinctly after my Beatles tour, my birthday morning, I came back to take these shots and I, I will post stills um, when I edit specifically because I wanted the morning light. So other than Kat being warm, so cool and the fact that we're still connected and she asks me all the time, when are you coming back? Hopefully this next trip to Europe during the summer, I will be back to Liverpool and staying at her Airbnb. And the fact that this was, is my first Airbnb, I could not have chosen a better place to stay. In fact, it was in Liverpool. Cat, the owner, and the way it's decorated, that is why it makes it unique and special for me. My second ever Airbnb was on the same birthday trip that I um, went to Liverpool. So from Liverpool, the Airbnb in Liverpool, I uh, went to Barcelona. And while I was looking for Airbnbs in Barcelona, a similar picture like this made me want to stay here. And I took that picture actually, but it's like, let me see the shower head right there. It's like it was like showering in a garden. It was is in the Elborn district in Barcelona. I, I had a hard time finding it, only it's only because of me. 
<laughs> I wasn't quite familiar with the Gothic Quarter, Elborn District, but at the end of my four day stay in this Airbnb, I was a part of the neighborhood. I knew it like the back of my hand. What I love, and I don't look up their name because I do save all my Airbnb messages. Ali Angelou Gualun. Ali Angelou. The most generous, kind, open minded, open hearted co host couple that I have ever stayed with. They cooked me dinner at the end of my stay. I need to reach out to reach out to them actually and sent me my camera and my jeans when I left them there. What made this amazing Airbnb quite the difference from Liverpool to Barcelona? And still in, so I stayed in Kat's Airbnb, which is her home. Stayed in Ali and Gualum's, Gualum, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Airbnb, which is also their home. So I had rooms in, in either. Couldn't be farther, more far on the spectrum. Their loft in Barcelona, in an old, old loft. An old, old building that was turned in a into a loft. <sighs> want to say 17th century? I could be wrong. Sorry if it's getting dark, the light's going. Um, the lift. Old cage. The stairs. I should put that up. Actually, let's see if I can find it for you guys really quick. And I will say it is different surfing on the internet through Google TV. <laughs> I didn't take too many pictures in their loft only because I was out and about a lot. You see those stairs? Those are the kind of stairs that were there. And once you opened, either take the stairs or the lift, you open up the front door, you are smack dab in the Elborn district, number one. Number two, Ali and Guilum. They made my stay like home. I mean, all, all the Airbnbs have been like home, but those, Liverpool and Barcelona have been the only two Airbnbs that I actually stayed in people's homes, but it was, their loft had, I can't say vintage, but so much character. Old world character. I, I will put up um, stills that I took. And again, I was bowled over by the choice that they made based on their listing. I would highly recommend it if you ever went, whenever you go to Barcelona. Mm
because of my wonderful Airbnb experiences in Europe, I was hooked. Hook, line, and sinker. And you can tell, I changed my hat. I had my third Airbnb visit, stay, in my hometown of Sacramento. It was the year after the pandemic, and I had the itch to go away. Sorry, the light has gone. I had the itch to go on a trip, but because of um, lockdown um, restrictions and pandemic, and everyone was kind of traveling, but not traveling, and I was still me very careful with COVID. And I thought, why don't I stay in an Airbnb um, near my home, in my hometown? And I read about the COVID restrictions, and that is something that I did start doing um, from air, every Airbnb visit since then, is that even though Airbnb does have um, cleaning guidelines uh, for COVID, I still always and I trust them, but I always still, for my peace of mind, bring, um, I see them over there, Clorox wipes just to do the handles and the remote controls and the toilet seat. And I believe that first visit, I did bring um, Lysol spray to spray the bed sheets, that sort of thing. But I found Nikki's, I can't remember her husband's name, Airstream, an Airstream. Hello, in Airstream about, I don't know, it depends on traffic, uh, up going up what avenue, near off of uh, where I live with my parents on the river, could take up to a half an hour in traffic days, but non-trafficy days, 20 minutes. It is off the, it borders the Delta, which is, um, I think it's the Delta, or is it the Sacramento River? Might be the Sacramento River. I'll have to find out for sure. Sacramento River. Sacramento is levied around rivers. So Nikki's wonderful Airbnb is an airstream that her, her husband, and her children actually use to go traveling. It is parked on their working farm near the river. And it's about 15, 20, 25 minutes away from where I live near the river. And I have stayed here three times. 2021 on my birthday. Was it 2020? No, 2020 on my birthday. Sorry. 2021 on my birthday. And then the summer, 2022? No, I don't remember. I know it was right after the pandemic, that birthday, and then another birthday, and then summer break. I love it so much. And this is the first time that, I don't know if you can see it, I brought, Creative bits, my cameras, DSLR and film, visual journaling stuff, I can see mine right here, and books. Also, first time that I shopped for food. So I started a tradition, my tradition of three times staying here, Airbnbs, at least close to home, will always be creative. And I will get food that I don't normally usually get when I'm living at home with my parents, because my mom does the cooking, which I'm blessed. But mostly, I consciously, unconsciously made my Airbnb trips stateside, close to home, creative. So, by that nature, they are always much needed. Mini breaks. 
so you can see, I mean, even though it's a small space, I packed it out. And Nikki is so sweet. Her husband, and I've seen her children. It is my home away from home. And I know that if I ever needed something last minute, they would accommodate. And what makes it special is that it's an Airstream. It's a working farm and I will post uh, pictures of the animals. Actually, hang on, there. Every morning I would go, I will bring even the two winters, it was freezing cold, summer was not so bad, but I would go say hello to the animals. Beautiful, right? They've got dogs too, but what makes it special is that it's on a farm. It feels like you're far away, even though, like I said, 20, 25 minutes going that way on the freeway. I go back home and I, the last, the, those three, three times that I stayed there, I felt like it was a special place to celebrate my birthday, but also rejuvenated. I highly recommend it. If you're going through North, driving through NorCal or looking for a place to stay in Sacramento, Nikki's. I don't know her husband's name, but love, 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 love her Airbnb. <laughs> Correctly, Gail's Airbnb up this way, up Placerville. I'm here in Diamond Springs. There is something about staying in Airbnbs here in the Gold Country. Um, it's not too far away from my home on the river with my parents. Uh, coming up here was half an hour, so quick, but. The weather is different, so I hopefully I'll be able to go back down the hill before it snows on Wednesday. Anyway, I saw these pictures of Gail's cabin. It's a cabin. It's a cabin that I don't know if she made, but she redid. She used to be an antique dealer. I saw a picture similar to this on her listing, sold. I was going to go there for one birthday, but I decided not to because I wasn't quite sure if it was going to snow or not. But quaint went last summer. Quaint, well appointed. And I will say, um, backtrack a little bit to uh, Nikki's Airstream because they live in it very well appointed. Details uh, along with Gales that honey, oil, eggs, water. That's why I love Nikki's Airstream and Gales. I call it the magic cabin because they left food stuff for me. 
that just, I don't know, it just adds an extra warmth to it. So that's what made that unique was that you felt like you were living in, she was welcoming, welcoming me home. Now she was away when I first checked in, but she was very responsive. And what I love also about Airbnb as a sidetrack is that it is your home. The ones that I've stayed with, stayed at here in the States anyway, you have the whole run of space to spread out. And because I have made my Airbnb stays creative, I am packing up bits of home to take with me to my new home. So this wonderful magic cabin, I really felt at home because I did have the run of the place. It's probably about the same, no, a little bit smaller than this Airbnb. But the way that she decorated and the garden off the little patio, and I firmly believe Placerville has that unique uniqueness about it. Everyone loves their outside space and they decorate with vintage stuff. Oh, this is an actual pure drinking water. Okay. <laughs> Which I love. Gail, what makes Gail's Airbnb special is, like I said, all the little homey bits, food stuff she leaves. Really, the way that she decorated and Gail, I need to reach out to Gail again. We, when she did come home, we bonded. And so she owns the cabin and then she owns the middle uh, land, which there was a gate, it was locked, but she said next time I went, I could use that. And she owns the um, house on the front side of the street. It is in El Dorado. So not quite Placerville. It's a one street town. She's an amazing, kind soul. And it made that trip so much more special. So if you are going up to the gold country, going up to Lake Tahoe, or just want a unique stay in NorCal, Northern California, you gotta stay at Gail's Magic Cabin. If I'm correct, I'm on my fifth stay because I um, stayed three times at the Airstream. So my fifth stay was during my past birthday this year, last year, two months ago at, I thought about going back up to uh, Gail's cabin, magic, magic cottage, magic cabin. <laughs> but again, I wasn't quite sure about the snow. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to head back down 20 minutes on the freeway to my old part of town where I lived on my own for seven years. And midtown, downtown Sacramento has become very hip the last seven, six, five years. And I stayed at a building that's new. 
three stories, probably the largest Airbnb I've ever stayed at. I had the whole place to myself. So I brought way too much arty stuff. <laughs> and I did a lot of photo shooting because even though it was raining the first couple of days, still was able to take pictures because of all the windows. It's a triangle house. It was a house built on the corner that is a triangle. The land is triangle shaped. So the house is triangle shaped. The house is called the triangle house. You can see it from the freeway. But when the sun came out, any artist, if I ever really, need, if I ever need an artist retreat close to home, 20 minutes on the freeway, I said, I'm going there. Cause look, I didn't even have to, didn't even have to, didn't even have to tweak with the light. What made it special was that I felt like I was in the city, like San Francisco in the city, 20 minutes away. I took an Uber to the British pub restaurant I always wanted to go to. I was going to take an Uber to the Crocker, but as with Airbnbs, I always, most of the time, want to stay in because of the space, because I brought created, creative bags and bags and bags of creative stuff. But yeah, and always, let's see, yeah, all the Airbnbs that I've stayed at in town or close, close to Sacramento have streaming. So there you go. But this particular um, Airbnb stay, because I had the run of three floors. It was modern and the first modern place that I stayed at. The other ones have been unique in their own ways. Quirky, boho, vintagey. The Airstream is a class of its own. This was the first modern place I've stayed. And so I had to take pictures. What made it unique? The triangle house, the fact that it was so close to my home on the river with my parents that I felt like I was in the city, the light, and it was my birthday. So if you're in Sacramento and if you don't want to come, come up all the way to the gold country for a unique stay, don't want to stay in an airstream on a farm, stay here because Andrew's place is in the midst of happening, I never thought I would say that, Sacramento, Sacramento's midtown and downtown, and I see that my battery went. went. Now I know what uh, other YouTubers go through. Don't know where it ended, but if you want a unique stay, don't want to come up all the way to the Gold Country to stay at Gail's Magic Cabin or even here, um, Magic Cottage, I call it the Magic Cottage here in um, Diamond Springs or Nikki's awesome Airstream on a farm, you need to stay at Andrew's Triangle House right in the hub, right off the freeway, I-80, in the middle of Midtown, the happening place in Sacramento. I never thought I'd say that. Tell them Jeannie said ya. <laughs>
Yes. Sixth Airbnb stay was in San Francisco. And I always thought that San Francisco Airbnbs would be very expensive. But one of the reasons why I'm wearing this hat, actually, the stay in San Francisco was to attend my beloved Auntie Letty's funeral services. And because my mom was staying with me, I was driving my mom and I to San Francisco for the services. I wanted to find a place that was modern, but also unique because Airbnbs for me always have to be unique. Um, even though we weren't there that long and we would, were only there at night, um, I did take a few pictures. I didn't bring any art supplies. I just brought cameras. Um, actually, one camera. Yeah, I only brought one camera, um, which is the most pared down. Oh gosh, this was up the whole time, but oh well. <laughs> Off the cuff for these videos. Um, yeah, I only I brought my tripod and actually I did bring this camera, uh, my DSLR. And the only true time I had to document was the morning we were leaving. So I don't know if you could see the pictures really didn't turn out. I mean, there were some that did. I don't know if it was because of the mood of the trip or because I had to get up really early to take pictures before taking care of my mom and packing up the car. Um, I'm not sure. So I just kind of affected, <laughs> affected, you know what I mean, filtered the pictures. But Samson, your place, that's the second modern place that I stayed with. A, my mom loved it. She was, and my family loved it. Um, the family that um, drove my mom home um, one night, because I had to check in. We're, they were all impressed. Um, the top floor we had, the bottom floor was other rooms. There are five rooms, but the top floor, the main floor, is where this picture is taken. He had, and I got this place because of the fireplace. So I did sit in front of it a little bit. But Samson's customer service, I don't know how else to say it, host skills, hosting skills are amazing. He waited for me the first night we checked in, which was the night of the viewing, and I had to drive through the rain. Torrential biblical storm in California at that time. He waited for me to make sure that I could check in correctly or if I had any questions, and helped me park in to the very narrow San Francisco type garage. And because the next day was the funeral, I asked him, do you mind coming early to help me back out of the garage? And I will park in the front from then on. He lives close. He came and helped me back out. That is what makes this Airbnb in San Francisco unique. That and the well-appointed living room. The modern kitchen and the backyard, um, which we didn't really get to spend, or I didn't get to spend time in because of the weather. But also, it's not in the middle of the city. It's in a neighborhood, which was only 10 minutes away from the church, where we had auntie's funeral service, and my uncle's house, which is where I spent a year and a half living with them. So I knew that area really well. It got my mom's thumbs up, and if for some reason, if I ever need to stay in San Francisco and not stay with family, I'm staying at Samson's. And yeah, that's the last Airbnb. I'm at my seventh. 
Um, but yeah, I haven't ended the pictures yet. <laughs> but I will put my little bit and edited pictures as well with other edited pictures that I took at all my Airbnbs. Highly recommend Airbnb. I am hooked. <laughs>